What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp quick model for you. So we're going to model this kind of spiraling, stair-stepping lamp, where each one of the lights steps up just a little bit as it spins in a circle. So we're going to use an extension called Memory Copy. I've done a video on Memory Copy before, but you can download that from the Sketchucation store. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so first thing we're going to do when we model this uh, lamp is we're going to come in here, you can delete out the default model. First thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a 24 sided circle. And remember to um, adjust the number of sides on your circle, you just activate the circle tool and then type in a number and hit the enter key. So in this case I'm going to type in 24 and hit the enter key. And then I'm going to draw a circle that's 8 inches in diameter, just like this. So, and you'll see what this did is because we set this to a 24 sided circle, it's got 24 segments in this circle. And we're going to use those segments in order to kind of inference, inference into the shape that we're going to create. So first thing you can do is you can um, start by drawing a line right in the center of your model and then um, move your mouse over to this midpoint right here um, so that your mouse is over it. And basically all you're doing is you're using this as an inference point to make sure that you draw a line in the right direction. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna type in 5.5. .5. So we're drawing a five and a half inch line right here. And so then the next thing we're gonna do, cause we're gonna start modeling our uh, light fixture here, is you're gonna go ahead and draw a circle. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and cut the number of sides down to 12. So draw a 12 sided circle here. And the only reason we're doing that is we're trying to cut down the number of uh, faces in our model and keep it running kind of quickly. So you've got your guideline that you've drawn here. Just draw a circle, uh, 12 sided, and we'll say the radius is gonna be a, a quarter inch. So you can just type in 0.25. So then you can come in here and you can erase your guideline just like this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line down from our circle just like this. And we'll go ahead and call this, we'll go ahead and call it two feet. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to get a line going straight down. And you should be able to use inferencing to draw a perpendicular line. You can see how this draws a line perpendicular to the edge just like this. So you can go ahead and use this to draw your line if you want to. And draw a line out, we'll call it six inches, just like this. So now what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a shape that kind of comes down and you know what, I'm gonna move this up about six inches, make this a little bit shorter, just like this. So you've got a line that comes down six, that comes down one foot six inches and then goes out six inches. And it's perpendicular to this line just like this. So if you were to draw a line straight out through this midpoint, it would be right above where this line ends. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a little arc along this edge. And so just click once on this edge and then move your mouse up until it turns purple. And when your mouse turns purple and you click on this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna replace your square edge with kind of an arc like this. So you can draw just this going along an arc. So now you've got kind of the general shape that you're gonna use in order to draw this. So you can go ahead, come in here, select this line. And you can do that by just uh, dragging from right to left in your model and then coming up here and clicking this button for the follow me tool and clicking on this face. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna extrude your your uh, face out like this um, so that you have kind of your path for the, for the piping that goes on this light. So now you can just come across here, you can select this face, right click on it to reverse it so the white face is facing out. And so you can go ahead and you can come in here and for now you can make this a group just like this. So select this face and then make it a group. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw kind of a little canvas, just like this. And basically you're just drawing, you're basically just drawing something that you can draw your profile of your light bulb on. So, and for whatever reason, it does not want to inference. So one of the things you can do if you want to is just draw, we'll call it like a 16 inch line straight out here, and then just draw straight down and use inferencing. So, Basically what I did is I used the center point and the edge of the or and the midpoint of this line to direct this line the way I wanted it to go and then I drew it long enough that I could just go straight down and just create this canvas just like this. So now you can use the rectangle tool to do that. You can come in here and erase these lines because you don't really need them anymore. 
whoops there you go just like this so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here you're gonna draw the profile of your light bulb so really all you need to do is just come in here and uh, just draw a line up like this and then across so just like this so this will give you the first piece of your light bulb because um, we're gonna we're gonna use this um, we're gonna use this circle to create our path that we're gonna extrude this along so we're gonna make a circular extrusion what you can do is you can come in here and you can draw first kind of the housing piece of your light bulb and then the second piece is you can come in here with the uh, you can come in here and you can draw another arc coming off of this just like this to create your actual bulb itself so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna use an extension um, to weld this line because basically what's going on right now is when uh, we extruded this along the face it broke it up into a bunch of different segments which is okay but if you come in here and you use the follow me tool it's gonna extrude this into a bunch of segments and that's not really what you want so and in fact what I'm gonna do actually because this only has 12 lines along it and so it makes everything look a little bit rough so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna draw a so what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna draw we're gonna actually draw a 24 sided circle in here I'm um, just a little one um, and the reason I drew a 24 sided circle is because I want this to be a smooth path it is gonna create a lot of extra geometry um, and that may get a little problematic but we'll go ahead and try it so just come in here and just draw a 24 sided little circle just like this and all you really need it for is just to create this path so you're gonna select this path and then you're gonna come in here with the follow me tool and you're gonna extrude this piece along that face just like that all right so all you're gonna do is you're gonna select the perimeter of this or the edge of this circle just like this by single clicking on it then you're gonna use the follow me tool to extrude this in a circle so the next thing you're gonna do and this is kind of important is that you come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and erase these edges out just like this um, and the reason for that is because I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make this you can unselect that but I'm going to make this a group and the reason I want to make this a group is because I'm going to color this face separately from this face and I may want to edit it separately as well so it's important that I come in here and uh, I make that its own group now while I'm working on it and that'll give me the opportunity to come change some things later so and then you're gonna do the same thing with your bulb you're just gonna create that circular path and then you're gonna extrude um, in a circle just like that using the follow me tool and you can come in here and you can make this a group as well and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select all three of these pieces and I'm gonna come in here and fix this real quick because it didn't have a face in here for some reason so just draw a line across that and it'll heal your face but so now what you've got is you've got one of your um, one of your light bulbs in here and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select these three pieces we're gonna right click we're gonna make those a component and we're gonna call them it doesn't really matter just call it light just like that so now this is a component so now when we make a copy of it any changes we make to one uh, it'll make to the others as well so that's gonna get important in a little while but now what we're gonna do is we've got our light drawn just like this so now we're gonna rotate it once so you can just activate you can select it activate the rotate tool click on this center point and then you've got this midpoint right here and I'm gonna go ahead and save my model first it's always a good idea to save your model when you're gonna do anything like uh, rotating or creating copies with the rotate tool or anything like that because um, you don't want to lose all your work that's no fun so anyway so what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this object you're gonna activate the rotate tool and set it in the middle of your point right here and then uh, move your mouse out so that it's in the middle middle point of this segment and then we're gonna activate copy mode by tapping that control key and what copy mode does is instead of rotating your object just like this and just moving the one you have selected it'll create a copy just like that so you can see what that did is now I've got a second piece of this or a second copy of this that kind of moved to the side so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this up a little bit so all you need to do is set a point on here and then just move it up just a little bit and what that's gonna do is that's gonna put this above this face a little bit and that's what we want so and then once we've got 
a copy rotated and moved up like this, we're going to use an extension called Memory Copy, which you can get from the Sketchcation warehouse. And uh, basically what you're going to do with Memory Copy is you can right click on your original component. And this only works with components, by the way. You can right click on this original component and then you can go down to this option that says Play It Again. And then click on your next object. And you can see what that's going to do is that's going to apply the same rotation and movement factor. And so you can just keep clicking on this all the way around your circle, just like this. So it's a really easy way to kind of stair step your objects up. So and the only thing I don't like about this is it doesn't really feel like it's stair stepped up a lot. Uh, it feels like it just stair stepped up a little bit. So we're going to undo this. And we're going to need it to stair step up some more, but before we do that, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and move this component down six inches and then come in here and heal this face just like this and push pull it so that it's six inches longer. You see how I just extended the tube on this piece? So that'll give us a little more length which will allow us to stair step this up a little bit more. So this did end up being two feet long right here and you can come in here real quick and clean this piece up. You may have to use the erase tool in hide mode to hide that geometry. But anyway, so we're going to come back in here now and we're going to select this object, do the same thing, move this out to the midpoint and then rotate it to the middle of the next segment. And then uh, maybe what we'll do is we will move it. So about the center of our bulb is now about at the top of the bulb, just like this. So you see how this is stepping up a little bit. So once we've got our movement set like this, we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to come in here, select play it again, and then just click on our light, just like this. And you're probably going to end up clicking on your light about 23 times, just like that. And see, that stair step did a, a little too much. So you can see how this is a little bit of trial and error in here. So you can go ahead and move this, whoops. You can go ahead and move this back down a little bit so that it's not quite stair-stepping as much as I had it stair-stepping originally. So, and then do the same thing. Just come in here, do play it again. And you can see how all it's doing is it's coming in here and it's figuring out the difference between those two objects and then it's just repeating that movement over and over again. So now what you've got is you've got your light in here. So you've got all your different pieces and stuff like that. And this is this is when you're going to come in here and you're going to color everything um, while everything's still a component. So you're just going to come in here. You're going to select these objects and give them kind of a... We'll give them kind of a... Just a yellow for right now. And then uh, we'll take these other objects and we'll make them kind of a bronze. So maybe the C08 or something like that. Yeah, that ought to work for right now. So now what you've got is you've got all your lights in here and you've got them uh, kind of stair-stepping the way that you want them to and everything else. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to explode these components. So you're going to come in here, you're going to right-click, and you're going to click Explode. And basically what that did is that took away your component functionality. So you can see how now if I try to edit this piece, um, it's not going to affect any of the others. So these aren't components anymore. So now these are all separate objects. I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to explode these one more time. I find that works a little bit better. Um, it does create more faces. But we're going to go ahead and right click on all of these and click explode. You can see what that does is that breaks these up into their individual geometries just like this. So now what you're going to do is you're going to drag your mouse across them to select them just like this. And then you're going to right click and you're going to say intersect faces with model. And basically what it's going to do when it intersects the faces with the model is it's going to come in here and it's basically going to say anywhere where geometry and your model intersects it's going to split it. So you can see how this object now, when I select my face down here, it doesn't select the stuff up here. Well, now you can come in and you can erase the tops of these. And probably the best way to do that is just to drag your mouse across them just like this. So, and then you can come in and you can clean up all the extra stuff. Then you've got a couple leftovers up here. So, and then all we're going to do is we're just going to push pull this face up just like this. And you do have some extra parts and pieces in here. So you can come in here if you want to and 
fill in one of them just like this and then just kind of do the same thing that you did before where you just rotate some geometry into it and then type in times 23 that'll make 23 copies of it now those are all filled in and you can come in here if you want and delete all of these now you're not gonna hurt anything by doing that there you go and then if you don't like these little points showing through you can just push push pull this up just a little bit more so now all you have to do is just come in here make this top piece a group color that in as well and now you've got kind of your suspended light fixture piece in here so anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap up today's episode. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this workflow. Do you like the model? Um, have you been using memory copy for anything? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.